In this problem, we're given a weak acid, hydrosanic acid, HCN, and we're given a concentration, or an initial concentration of 0 0.20 molar. Some concentration. We're asked to calculate the pH, and we're also given the Ka value for this uh, weak acid as being 4.9 times 10 to the negative ninth. How do we determine the pH? Hmm. Well, first of all, let's uh, uh, try and figure out what this is going to do. I throw this into an aqueous environment. It's going to dissociate to give H plus, or H3O plus, and CN minus. CN minus, minus is the conjugate base of this. Now, just in case you guys care, um, I'm going to throw this at you. HCN in an aqueous environment actually interacts with water in an equilibrium setting. When this hydrogen dissociates to release H plus, it actually protonates that water to form H3O plus and gives my CN minus just like that. This is what is actually happening. What we write up here is sort of the simplified lazy person's way of writing it out. In case any of you care, because this is the thing releasing hydrogen, it's the acid, this is the guy accepting the hydrogen, it's a base. This becomes the conjugate acid, and this thing becomes the conjugate base. So I look at my K expression, it's of course going to be, uh, I'm, I'm talking about writing a K expression of this thing up here. It's going to be H plus, or its concentration multiplied by CN minus divided by the concentration of HCN. The K expression of the thing down here is going to be H3O pluses concentration multiplied by the concentration of CN minus, I'm being kind of lazy with my brackets, divided by the concentration of HCN. H2O is omitted because it's a liquid. You don't include liquid or solids in equilibrium constant expressions. They are omitted. What's the difference between the K expression of this bottom thing and the K expression for this top thing? Well, you should see that the only difference is the H plus and the H3O plus. One is substituted for the other. And that's why I sometimes say that H plus and H3O plus are kind of interchangeable. H plus is sort of the lazy person's way of writing H3O plus, at least in aqueous, in aqueous equilibrium scenarios. So, anyway, I just want to throw that all at you. I'll now erase this thing and we'll get back to a problem. So, what in the world do I do? Well, if this were um, a one-way arrow, in other words, if this were a strong acid, then whatever this concentration was, as soon as the strong acid was thrown into water, it would dissociate virtually 100% to release the exact same concentration of H plus and of CN minus because they're present in a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So 0.2 molar would be the final concentration of H plus if this were a strong acid. And then we could just use the pH equation, negative log of the concentration of H plus is equal to the pH, and then we'd be done. Unfortunately, this is not a strong acid. See, strong acid pH calculation is super easy. This is a weak one. It's an equilibrium arrow. So what do we do? We have to do an ice table. Ice, of course, stands for initial change and equilibrium. So at initiation, I throw in 0.2 moles per liter of HCN. How much H plus, how much CN minus do I have? Well, at initiation, I've got zero of these. Now, what's going to happen is this thing is going to float around in solution, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and the concentration of this is going to decrease while the concentrations of these two are going to increase by some amo uh, amount until we reach equilibrium. By what amount is it going to be? I don't know. I'm just going to call this amount minus x. The uh, concentration of this goes down by an amount x. Now, proportionally speaking, by what amounts will the concentrations of each of these go up? Well, because it's present in a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, each of these concentrations also has to go up by x. 1 to 1 to 1. What's the final concentration going to be at equilibrium? Well, for all I do is add the first row to the second row. So the final concentration of HCN is going to be 0.2 minus x. The final concentration of this is going to be 0 plus x, or just x. And the final concentration of this will also be the same. That's our ice table. We good? Okay. Ho hopefully we are. So once again, we're, we've got a K expression up here is uh, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 9 equaling each of these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values and throw them in for uh, where they belong here. So I've got 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10 being equal to H plus equilibrium concentration is X. CN minus equilibrium concentration is also X. And I divide that by the HCN equilibrium concentration, which is 0 0.20 minus X. Then I solve for X. Now, as I pointed out in a, an earlier video, the denominator value x right here 
is going to be very, very, very small compared to 0 0.20. Or, and the reason is because HCN is a weak acid. So you don't get huge amounts of these things compared to HCN. Now because this number x here is so small compared to 0 0.20, you can basically cross it off in the denominator and pretend it's not there. That makes the math much, much simpler. So what I've got here is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th being equal to x squared, that is x times x in the numerator, divided by 0 0.20. All I have to do is solve for x. Once you solve for x, that is going to be equal to the concentration of H+. Plus. It also is equal to the concentration of Cn-, minus, but I don't care about that really. Right now I just care about the concentration of H+. Plus. So once I solve for x, I can take that number and put it up here in the equation for pH and determine what the final pH is going to be for this weak acid scenario. I'll let you go ahead and do that on your own.